It's been a few days since uh, we shot a video. This morning we're in Gilbert. Uh, this is Century Builders. And we're out this morning talking with Chet about five things to avoid when uh, purchasing a steel building. Chet, what are those five things? Well, the first one is uh, the deal. Don't do the deal right up front. You know, if you call around online somewhere or something, you're going to typically find a steel building company that the salesman will tell you they got some kind of special deal for you. That if you lock in the steel price today or lock it, give them a deposit to lock it in, that uh, they're going to have a special thing for you. The problem with that is that you just called them out of the blue. All of a sudden they got some special deal. You're not any more special than any other customer. What they're trying to do is push you into something. And so just use your common sense. Don't, uh, don't let somebody push you into something too fast. And the special part of that deal is probably the commission that that salesman is going to make if he locks you into that price today. This is code compliance. You know, the fact that you own a property in the, in the United States, especially in Arizona where we are, doesn't always mean that you can build exactly what you want to on your property. The building department, um, the regulatory agencies, flood control, environmental services, they all have a part in that and they want to they want to determine what you can build and what you, you can't. So the first thing that I would do is take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, just put on there, um, draw out your property, a sketch your property, put the house on it, put your shop on it that you want to build or your building that you want to build. If you've got a swimming pool, other sheds or something, put that on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You can hand draw it, just as simple as that can be. Take it down to the building department and uh, Find out which building department you are first. To take it down to them. Sit down with somebody down there, and see if there's any things that that are going to throw up roadblocks to you getting your uh, building done. One is to be prepared before you put any kind of a deposit on a building or sign on bot dotted line. The one of the most important things is for you to decide exactly what you want in your building. How tall do you want it to be? How deep do you need it to be? What size of the door opening needs to be for your RV or for your truck to come into? How many walk doors you want, how many windows you want, those things, if you can decide those in advance and have those ready before you start talking to somebody about a building, it'll help you be, um, get the best price for your building and lock it in at the best rate you can. Some things that you might want to consider is what the, what's the height of your fifth wheel trailer, your motorhome, if you want to park something like that inside. How deep do you need it to be? We had a guy one time that wanted to use his shop for an archery range. And so he needed a 65 foot long building to, to fit that archery range in. How many windows, how are you going to ventilate, if you're going to cool the building or heat it, whether you want insulation in it and how thick and heavy that needs to be, whether you're going to insulate your doors on it, those kind of things. The next point that you need to think about is what's included and what's not. A typical steel building package will include the steel structure, and the engineering for that steel structure. It will probably also include the door openings, like the big door openings, roll up door openings. What it doesn't include typically is the concrete engineering. You may have to have that done locally. It probably, it may not include the windows, it may not include the actual doors themselves, or the openings may be there, but not the doors. It may not include the unloading of the steel. If you buy a steel package online, you may have to have a forklift there to unload it when the when the truck arrives. But if you can list those, if you can get those in writing from your salesman before you ever uh, sign on the dotted line so you know exactly what's included and what's not, then you're in much better positioned to bargain with your salesman before, that, uh, you, before you sign on the dotted line than you are afterwards. The last of these five points is to not overpay up front. Some steel building companies will require a sizable deposit before you, you order the building and maybe even another deposit after the building is put into production before it's, but before it's delivered. You need to make sure that the initial deposit that you pay is no more than 25% of the building price. That's about uh, the industry, that's the high end of the industry average for professionals. If you pay more than that, what the this steel building company is doing is they're front loading that contract, which means they've got their profit, um, they've got most of their commissions, and their incentive to perform to make sure that you get what you want is gone. And so you become 
yesterday's deal and they're more focused on today's deal and the next deal that they do than on serving you as a customer. So if you if you disregard the first four points of this, please don't let this four, this fifth one get by you. Because this may be the most important. Don't overpay up front. Don't pay for things before they're delivered. Make sure that the work is done before you get it paid for. You'll be happy that you did. This has been Chet Wilkins with Sentry Builders doing a video on a building in Gilbert, Arizona. For Diane, it's a beautiful building. It's a 35 by 35 foot building. It has 14 foot eaves. We've got a 312 pitch on the roof. And uh, we're just about done with this. We're doing some awnings on the outside of it. But uh, it's been a really nice project for Diane. Thanks.